The president in his little clip said it was particularly bad that they went after journalists. Really slow, no oomph. Well, maybe he recognizes that people have already dug up the clip where two years ago the White House questioned the judgment of this French newspaper. I mean, look, the New York Times, they're not running the, the they're not showing you the, the cartoons. Washington Post is not showing you the cartoons. They've already caved in. They've already bowed the knee in fear. And either Obama is bowing the knee in fear, or he is so uh, connected to Islamic terrorists, you know, on the empathy level and trying to understand it. I, I don't know what it is, whatever it is. He's so connected to them that he literally did not have the decency and the integrity to say the words Islamic terrorists or Muslim terrorists. He talked about terrorist organizations around the world. He said this strengthens our resolve. No, it doesn't. If it does, Mr. Obama, then encourage the press in America to use that freedom of press. Encourage them to run the, the cartoons. Islam is a blight. Oh, Randall, that's such a harsh phrase. Well, many of us are, are hostages to the moment. Hostages to the moment. And by that, what I mean is there's only so many minutes in a day. There's only so much time that we have to think, to look, to act. And there's so much data coming at us so fast, crowding in on our brain, that the ability to sit and ponder and process and make associations and connect dots, that critical element of analytical thought is being lost. Add to that, people don't read books as much as they used to. They don't read big books. They certainly, many people don't study history. Now, I don't, I'm not trying to be unkind to you. I'm thankful that you're watching this show. I'm thanking you that you're with me. But if you want to understand Islam, you're not going to get it in a day. You're not going to get it in a week. You could start by reading the Quran, but that would only be a start. It would only be a start. I mean, if you read the Quran, I mean, truly sit down and read it from cover to cover. You're going to be appalled by what you see. Some of it is very beautiful. There's some very beautiful poetry there and praise to Allah, which is the Arabic word for God. But you're not going to learn it by just reading the Quran. It's a system, all right? It involves the Quran, the Hadith, the Sunnah, the four major Sunni schools of thought that gave us Sharia law, or gave the world Sharia law. It's a, it's a body, a philosophy with rules, exegetical rules, hermeneutical rules. And to, to learn Islam, to study Islam on Islam's terms does not happen quickly. Now, by, by the way, if you are interested in looking online, go to our website, voiceofresistance.com, and watch the TV series that we did. We did a nine-part series called What Would Muhammad Do? To understand Islam, you have to look at the life of Muhammad. And if you look at what Isl Islamic people do, devout Muslims, if you look at what the religion of Islam commands and demands, you have to see it through the eyes and the life of Muhammad. All right? Muhammad is the problem. Muhammad is the issue. Muhammad is the fountain from which all of this bloodshed stems. And it's the exact thing that leaders like Obama are afraid to address. And the, the editor of this newspaper, God rest his soul, he said, I would rather die standing than live on my knees. God save us. He had the courage. He did it. You'll note that Obama said, well, the fact that this attack came against journalists, and these people fear freedom. It's not freedom that they fear. Obama can't even define freedom. The word freedom has 
a context that is philosophical and religious. Okay, a Marxist says that freedom is to be free from the capitalist pigs that keep us all subservient to money, all right? Obama says that freedom is freedom from worry, freedom from want, the ability to go to college on someone else's dime. The Chinese talk about freedom and they mock the universal uh, human rights um, covenant at the United Nations and they talk about the, to be free from worry and to be free from want and that they're working to feed all of their people on the government dime. Muslims believe in freedom. It's just their definition of freedom. And Obama's definition of freedom is actually slavery. He is a slave driver. I mean, look, he's trying to force Christian organizations to pay for the murder of babies. If that's not slavery, I don't know what is. So Obama's pathetic response shows the level of ineptness and I think some wicked, evil affinity with the Muslim world. Whatever it is, I don't know, but I'm telling you, his response was drivel and it was, uh, it was outrageous. It was an outrage. I'll be right back. I'm, I've got a couple of other things I want to share with you. Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today.